it just came across the feed because um, someone had posted that it amazes them uh, how well we all work together. And I have to say, it's been an amazing experience, seriously. Uh, we have 57 crew on board and um, people of all academic levels in all academic fields. And um, it's been amazing how well we've gelled together. Gelled, as in jellyfish, national jellyfish, <laughs> world, je world jellyfish day. Let me not take that away. But the fact that we come together uh, not knowing each other, yeah. not knowing each other's backgrounds or experiences, but have been able to come together for the mission itself uh, and get the job done. It's yeah. been it's been quite eye opening to see um, that really happen. Yeah. I've 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 learned a lot. I have learned a lot from the people that I've had an opportunity to work with and get to know and to talk to, and it's um, it's been awesome. It's yeah. been awesome. Absolutely, I've definitely learned a lot as well. And it always is amazing uh, how much people can. You know, you just meet a group of people, and then by the end of two weeks, when you're on a ship, we're here 24/7. Yep. You know, breakfast, Next thing lunch, you know, dinner. We're, yeah. We're knitting mittens for everyone <laughs> <Right>. on board. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, once we get everything going, our our shift will be able to go and relax for just a little bit. We'll be waiting with anticipation though to make sure that everybody is on the next shift is, is exactly where they need to be. But yeah, the lounge or the monkey deck for sure will be, I always choose the monkey deck. That's how I got to see the manta ray yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do too though. You're usually up there with me a lot. I am up there a lot. It's a beautiful spot to be. I don't know, I think all the um, ac action's gonna be happening in the, in the lounge today. Yeah, I think today may mine. be a lounge day yeah. uh, for sure, for sure. Or I'll be watching on my phone from the monkey deck, one yeah. of the two. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can give everybody a little update. I've been uh, I've been communicating with folks on the beach. Uh, everybody's really contributing to try to to help us efficiently find this target. So thanks to to all the folks helping. Uh, so we got a couple of additional, we got another target plan plotted. Um, we're going to continue our survey down this 778 meter contour. And then uh, if we aren't able to pick up the target uh, on the contour, the sub on the contour, we're gonna head towards the target I was just provided. And, and within the, the 200 meter uh, range of the Norbit, that should kind of, you know, we've got a Latin long, uh, we've got a depth contour, and so we'll touch all those on our way to, to try to sort this out. So it won't be doing. able to hide from us at that point. We're we're being as thorough as we can with the right. and trying to, you know, understand all the information that's available. These were the hurl team dove in two submersibles, so there's oh. different information from each. Their quality of the Latin long is slightly varying. They're both reporting different depths, so it, you got to kind of just a lot of uh, variables. Yeah, and so the the folks on the beach are great about helping out. So uh, Johan's got that plan uh, in the nav, and we're gonna we're gonna get moving on our way there. It's gonna be Johan. What do you think? Is it gonna be a couple hundred meters of movement? Yeah, so we'll move about 150 meters east and then 300 north. Yeah, so it's going to it's going to be a bit and we're going to stay off the bottom to allow the Norbit to be our kind of uh, give us a earlier acquisition of the target. So that's the best I have for the folks who are um, for Hans and for Phil. Uh, 
what is it getting towards dinner time? Maybe they, they can put their feet up and take a break for take, a little take bit. Take a break yeah. for a few Change minutes. Change it to we'll, your comfy uh, clothes. <laughs> uh, but we appreciate uh, them participating for sure and apologize for not landing right on the X, but it's the way it goes and, and we've got a plan in place that we're going to work through. It is, and I'm going to ask you a non-stressful question just to kind of let your mind take a break for a second, even though you're still looking. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. Why do we call the monkey deck the monkey deck? Ooh, that's a, you need something with uh, somebody with some Nautilus legacy. I think on the next watch, Rennie might have Rennie? some insight. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll have to save that question for then. then. Of course, if tradition holds, we're going to find the sub and exactly. Dr. Mayor and Dr. <laughs> Ballard will be here on the next watch. And so maybe asking them the same question will be. Uh, I think at that point, the question might not even make it through. I don't know. I'm sure it's a reference to like barrels of barrel of monkeys when we're all up there, like hanging over the rail. Barrels of monkeys hanging on the rail. But I am not sure. I don't think that's like a nautical. No, it's. I was I, when when I first heard the term, I was I was trying to process the, the, the where do we get monkeys on the monkeys on the ship, monkeys on the bed jumping I around. Know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I just went with it because that's what they said. <laughs> We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. No, we're not. Waiting for you to turn a little more. Sailors had to climb like monkeys to get to the top of the platform. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Maybe so. Now maybe it's the yoga poses that people are doing. That yeah, we might have name. to consider a, re a rename. I'm looking at my wing person here. <laughs> I saw yeah. the yoga mat out this morning. Yeah, so I was doing yoga up there on the monkey deck this morning. It was lovely. Um, I don't know if there there probably there is a monkey pose. I don't know the name of it though. I I did, I did not do it this morning. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Um, I just want to kind of give a shout out to our viewers and how awesome they are. Our listeners and viewers, they are they are just as committed to hanging out with us and finding these these targets as as we are. They're super excited about what we're doing and to be able to be a part of it. It's it's nice to have them with us. Yeah, it's very very appreciative. Oh, I feel bad. We uh, we had the opportunity to run the ship's multi-beam on the previous expedition that Larry and I were both out on, and we we did uh, survey McCall Seamount on the last expedition uh, while we were working out there in support of using that information here, and I just didn't it didn't work down my checklist to to run the multi-beam our ship's multi-beam. Yeah. On the previous expedition over this location to have, you know, a more precise insight into where we are. Man. Yeah, it seems like you had a lot of uh, sort of historical intel, but. Yeah, it's, it's the, the data that you had certainly led you to the spot. But between the differences, I'm sure we're just, I'm sure we're well, a blank it's all away. Part of it. This, yeah. This Probably the expectation of dropping right on it. This is maybe a little unfair. Yeah, well, it's just because we've gotten so good at what we do. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> right. right. That's what, that was our expectation. Well, other expedition leaders would have us right uh, that's on. That's right. That, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
I blame it on the today. I don't know. We started out with a whinge issue. You know, we were, yeah. we were running a little bit late. You know, it's just that kind of day. There you was know, a little you, gremlins. Yeah. I think it's going to make it all the much sweeter when you actually get to it. And there's going to be a reason why. You so wait and see. The, the reason will identify itself, and yeah. it'll, it'll all make sense. We are uh, monitoring the the Norbit results, and uh, the seafloor here is very benign. So mm -hmm. we're not going to be, I think when we see it, it's going to be resounding. Mm -hmm. um, so that's helpful. It could be uh, much ruggeder terrain. Meantime, we got a great view of set two of Hercules. I'm just amazed at the amount of marine snow that we've seen this whole trip. It's been so heavy. Yeah, I feel like it's not a view you get very often. <laughs> no, uh-uh. <laughs> and the sediment here, it looks like it, well, it's, again, what I can tell from the Norbit, it looks like this is just kind of, a, and the brief glimpse we caught, it just looks like it's this very silty, soft right. sediment that we're kind of cruising over right now. So that might have something to do with it too. Have we seen many whales during the voyage? N oh, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. I have definitely been the one scouting for them. Yeah, That's pardon. why I'm on the monkey deck so much. My mission is to see, I, as excited as I was yesterday with the manta, can you imagine my reaction and how that's gonna be when the whale shows up? Yeah, I, I can imagine a lot of yelling. <laughs> And it's not like it's going to be the first time that I've ever seen them. It's just that every time that I see them, I get so incredibly excited. They just make me so happy. So, no, I'm still looking. Uh, we are very early in, in this particular area for um, the migration to begin, uh, that great migration, which also makes me go back to the marine snow and wonder if, you know, all of that, that as heavy. I don't know what it's like here all the time. Yeah. Um, but if this is heavier than usual, is, is it because uh, the currents are moving things and the migrations are taking place and that's what they're following? And so I'm, I'm excited to see. I'm just hoping that I get the, the early achieving whales, the ones that work <laughs> hard at being the leaders, that maybe they'll show up while I'm still here in Hawaii and I'll be able to, to get a glimpse. Um, still looking for them though, still looking for them.
how long would it take to bury the submarine in sediment? It's a good question. Well, we know we have 14 years of, uh, of distance between the last time that we had a good visual and the pictures. I have not yet seen those. Um, I just was saw Jason was looking at one and it was pretty much on the top of the sediment 14 years ago. I, it would really depend honestly on currents and yeah, a the lot rate of, of deposition and if anything's changed. I would expect that at the very least there would be pieces sticking up unless degradation's happening faster than one might expect. But And then with our Norbit system, we would definitely still have yeah, I think, um, yeah, we yeah see we'd something. still be able to see, so. But definitely, we, I'm sure we'll see some around there for sure. I'm speaking that into existence because I know it's going to it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to be right after we get off uh -huh. watch. That's what's gonna it's going to happen within the next eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes. All right, you guys, so the, my relief has come. Second shift is um, getting close to getting started here, which which means we're going to be close to finding, so getting to our exact location. So thank you for joining us today. Um, we uh, Ale is going to come in and take over, and today is uh, National, well, it's World Jellyfish Day, so you should be aware of that, yeah. So someone in the chat told, reminded me the best way to remind us is just keep gelling. <laughs> yes, I'm needing a break. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day.
Uh, welcome to the 12 to 4 watch. Give us a second while we settle in.
stoked. You stoked? All right. <laughs> I'm stoked. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Larry, are you on? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is this is what we see in 200 kilohertz. Yeah, okay. Like I kind I don't I I'm not ex even sure why they have that mode <laughs> cuz right, it we'll like is non-functional. Okay. Well. Yeah. Well. Yeah, 400 works great though. Okay. I was just I was looking for more rings, that's all. Yep. All right. We have the 12 to 4 watch in place now. We're still in a search mode, uh, searching for uh, the the wreck of the Japanese submarine. And then we're looking for the uh, I-201, which was a uh, high-speed, medium-sized submarine built at the very end of the war. Never actually saw service in the war, but was... Uh, taken over by the Americans uh, uh, after the surrender and brought to Pearl Harbor, examined, and then uh, sunk in target practice out here. It was uh, discovered by uh, the Hawaii Embassy Research Lab, uh, the site, 14 years ago, um, and they had some submersible dives on. We have multiple reports of positions. Our search pattern is rather narrow. Um, certainly optically, we have the sector scanning sonars that can give us a little further view. And we're running the Norbit multi-beam, which will let us see about 100, 150 meters um, to either side. Um, and see if we can, we can find something. It's all, all a reminder that the ocean is a, a very, very big place. So yeah, um, it's a very, very small. Yeah, you said... Um, that uh, that they found it in uh, 96, you said? So they, like, nobody knew that it was out here until they actually found it? Is well, that it, it, it was known, but in 1946, I suspect uh -huh. that uh, the positioning that they yeah. had was not terribly accurate. Uh -huh. um, certainly it was long before GPS. and. So there was, like, a record that they had done it, like, out here they, in this area? Yeah, okay. Ex exactly, yeah. I uh -huh. uh, just want to give a heads up to everyone in the van that uh, because of the nature of the Larry, dive, we're going to be relying on practice. van cams. So, uh, the, no picking your nose. Use cannons or <laughs> the submarine was sunk with a, uh, the Japanese submarine was uh, scuttled, sunk in the tar in mm -hmm. a, as target practice by a single torpedo from the U.S. submarine Queen, Queenfish, I think was the name. And it, uh, that was in 1946. 1946, it was sunk by uh, American forces as target practice. Queenfish, after, yeah. being after what, I'm sorry? Yeah, no, it's Queenfish. You're just verifying that that, that was the U.S. submarine that, that sunk it with one torpedo. And the reports from the hurl dive was that the bow section is separate from the the rest of it. So there are two two targets on the seafloor that we'll be looking for. And we're, we're searching ultimately for three submarines. Is that right? For uh, eventually, yeah. The, the Today's primary target was the, the uh, I-201. Uh, which is this uh, high speed uh, at depth. That's the amazing thing. This submarine uh, was designed to travel, it's actually, uh, as I read, it was designed to travel Reach, at, bridge, nav, another step. at 19 knots underwater. It actually made about 16, Incredible. which was still quite remarkable in those yeah. days. Yeah. And that was about twice the speed of uh, a US submarine uh, at the time, bridge. underwater. Um, it doesn't have that much of an endurance doing that. Um, yeah. when, I, when I was looking at what the endurance was, I never saw a statistic for it, for its endurance at 16 knots underwater, uh, but it said it had a 50 hour underwater endurance at two knots. So I suspect it can make 16 knots, but not for long in on, on, on battery power. Yeah. Um, yes. And uh, on the surface though, at 16 knots, um, it would have a, Let's see, I don't, yeah, I think that's what it's top speed. It's its range was about 6,000 miles at 14 knots on the surface. 16,000 miles at 14 yeah. knots. Uh, 6,000, not 6,000. 6,000, 6,000 miles. About 
8,000 miles at 11 knots and 15,000 miles at 6 knots. It's all this question of efficiency of burning fuel and, and versus it, speed. It would clearly be use diesel for the uh, transportation, those long ranges, and then battery power as needed under, uh, you know. When, when submerged, yeah. When submerged. Yeah. And these were the Japanese fast attack boats at the time. Yeah, I so said th this was a, a, a relatively new class. Uh, the, it, it really didn't have a name yet. The, the class was, it was a name ship. The I-201 was the name ship of that class. Um, and again, it never actually saw action. It was commissioned in 19, uh, February 1945, and uh, not long before the war ended. Right. And captured and returned to obviously Pearl Harbor because this is where the Navy had the facilities to really take it apart examine it and learn what we could from uh, the sub before uh, right. sinking it. And er earlier today, Jason uh, passed around some very, very interesting uh, documents which were declassified now, classified when they were originally written way back in 1946, which was the Navy's analysis of this and many other of the captured submarines, uh, highlighting a number of the, the features that were unique to the Japanese submarines that would hopefully uh, help improve uh, U.S. submarine technology sure. from from that time on. What stood out to you when you reviewed those documents? Um, a lot of it was very technical about engine design and, and stuff like that, which didn't mean all that much to me. I think the thing that most stood out to me, which I, th I was very intrigued by because I didn't think they had that technology then, was that uh, many of the Japanese submarines, it turns out not this one, because this one was uh, so designed for high speed, but uh, most of the others, including the one we'll visit tomorrow, had a, uh, a coating um, that appeared just to be black paint and it looked the same on the surface and the bottom part, but um, it turned out to be, uh, on the higher parts of it, uh, a, a paint that was designed to minimize radar reflectivity, and on the lower part, uh, a textured surface, and they said that it was put on by trowel and had all these textured features right. that was meant to minimize the sonar strength of the the, the target strength of, from sonar. So that's so I think to me that was very very advanced. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Challenge accepted. Ahead of its time. Minimize sonar returns, huh? Yeah. yeah we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the report commented that that would probably have been affected only at very limited frequencies. <laughs> but, uh, but I thought that, w that was, that was a, a fairly advanced state of technology uh, at that time. And, and to be honest, I don't know if uh, U.S. submarines were at that time implementing those kinds of uh, features. I, I don't yeah, remember reading, seeing that, uh, Larry. I think you're right. That was uh, ahead of its time. and, and uh, faster and sounds like a little more advanced than American subs. Well, one of the most interesting things that I, I read in, in preparation for this, and it's something that I actually uh, had heard before, but this confirmed it, was that towards the end of the war, the Japanese uh, basically stopped building almost any surface ship, that all their effort went into constructing submarines, including the one we'll look at tomorrow, which was uh, designed to carry three large bombers, actually a, a submarine aircraft carrier. Um, and, and I think that's probably because by that time uh, the U.S. controlled the air. Right. And so surface ships were very vulnerable, but you can still supply, they can still supply their outer islands um, with submarines. Right. <coughs> And I've, I've, uh, we've all probably read how fortunate uh, that the, the Germans, uh, the Nazis, did not build more subs for the Atlantic, that, uh, and certainly the Japanese as well. So the subs are very effective at intercepting uh, merchant ships, warships. So we are still in search mode. We know the, the, the we know the location of these. Uh, wrecks roughly we can still send triclops out but uh it's i think they're doing stuff on it now but we can't yeah no we can't send anything out on the pcs and where did we are 
are at a depth of approximately 730 meters, but our location cannot be uh, broadcast or shown. I mean, technically we can do triclops. It'll just be creating the virtual reality, which it's, it's rendering right now. That's because I can't, uh, I've been, I've been trying to keep the mic away from my mouth because I lost my little mouthpiece and I didn't want to, I didn't want the clipping to affect anyone. Or maybe I'm just quiet. I can turn me up. Uh, let's see. How about now? How's that? <gasps> you found a pe Oh, you found a piece. Thanks, Tay. So, okay. Is this... Is this target, Larry, the one that we wanted to stop at and start going to the other... Okay, so we stop at right. this one and then start headed up and search along that line, Roger. Yeah, I think that... that... Norbit is... It, we're seeing bottom about 110 meters to either side of Hercules, mm -hmm. uh, but if something's up above the surface, we can see it further. So if something's up above the sand. And Chris, the, the very, very small targets that appear on the outer edges there, I assume, is just outer, outer beam noise? Uh, it looks like maybe some rocks. I don't know. Yeah, it's not... I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put too not, much faith in things it's out not, there. I mean, those are they're definitely... I think they're targets, but... Actually, they don't. They're, no, they're, those are just changes in backscatter mostly, yeah, okay. and a little bit of fuzz. Yeah, yeah they, you see, yeah. they don't really have any right. elevation. Yeah. Would it help if we? Uh, yeah, the, had the backscatter a, has more prominent. Yeah, we get more prominent backscatter out in those beams, but. Would you get a wider swath if we came up to? No, uh, changing mm, altitude it's doesn't, gone. doesn't. We tried. It doesn't make much difference. You, you really uh, can't see much beyond. At slant ranges like this, you really can't see much beyond. Oh, I see, because we're 40 meters off the seabed, but you're looking out 150 meters off the side. Yeah. I get it. Not total range, it. but like, yeah, it's our ranges to the side. And we tried different altitudes, and it was about the same no matter what we did. Right. So you, you're getting 150 meters each side of Herc. Yeah. At 40 meters off the seabed. That's correct, yeah. I see. So about a 200 meter swath. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I seem to be outrunning you. Shall I slow it down a little? Uh, yeah, you might as well, because we're going to stop. Actually, you should just stop. I'll stop. Bridge, oh. bridge, nav. Let's hold Alexa, position here. Hold position. All right. So this is as far as we're going to go. Now we're going to start at a bearing of... We're going to go do north next. So line Heard yourself up. To do, to do that. Uh, head north. I can turn on our gridder to see grid map. We have a viewer asking what is backscatter? Yeah, so backscatter is sort of the intensity of the acoustic return that you receive. So, if you think about like a, you might have to like a 3D camera, like you might have on an old Xbox Connect or something like that, or even a LiDAR on an iPhone. Um, it'll give you the depth of the points, but it'll also give you the color. Uh, backscatter is sort of like, is analogous to the color of, backscatter is analogous to the color of the uh, acoustic return, right? So if it's something is harder, or you ping it more straight on, it's going to show up brighter. If it's softer or you hit it at more of a shallow angle, it's going to show up lighter. Or show up darker, rather. Chris or Dan, um, yeah. the Atalant sector scan, is there still 20 meter range? Bar Correct, bar? yeah. And is that uh, the 20 meter range, 100 meter range. Yeah, is that the maximum of its, of its it can go or can. The uh, maximum effective. Yeah. I can bump it up, see what happens, but it just get noise after 100 That's meters. Right. Shrimp. So oh. 
that's uh, 200 meters, for example, and that's pretty chunk chunk. So no easy seabed, but who knows? Might pick up something. Actually, this isn't bad. This will give us a little bit of. That'll just overlap our last path. So. Yeah, and so, but you're still seeing further with uh, with Norbit than you are with the. Uh, I'm looking out uh, 200 meters now. Okay, so right. those are 40 that's, meter so that's divisions. A little further. Uh, you'll have to come up a bit as I come on the other. Hercules is at about 50, 40, 41 meters. Uh, All right, I'm going to start the ship moving. All right. Yeah. Bridge, bridge, nav, 360 meters. All right, we're going to start, we'll start running through those other targets. Huh? No, that, that, that was, that's... Yep, three th six zero, yeah. three six zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> While we're still in the overlap section, why don't we let's try coming down thirty five meters. I just want to see what that does to our swath. You want swath. to come down five? Yeah. Right. I want to see what that does to our swath. Going up at a certain point One, doesn't help two, your range anymore. Three, four, five. All right. Let's see if that... It'll come down slowly there, though. Yeah, everything's dialed way back. That's fine. That's great. Yeah, I can... Speed up. No, no, don't bother. Don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do we feel good enough to introduce the search party? Uh, sure. You want to start us off? I should never say this because I always <laughs> end up going first. You, if you want me to go first, I'll go first. No, no, I can go. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name is Manel Morangi. I am the video engineering intern on this leg of the EV Nautilus. Uh, so you can't see me in the van cam, but I'm waving my arm there uh, to the right <laughs> of the screen. Um, yeah, yeah one of them. absolutely no difference in terms of our swath width. <laughs> so I'm wondering if we shouldn't just keep it lower. Uh, when I'm not on board, I work as a science communicator, a filmmaker, and a photographer in Maryland. Let's start with the front row. So, Rai, you go next. Hi, everyone. I'm in the Atalanta seat today, and my name's Rai. And when I'm not on the Nautilus, I am working for Ocean Networks Canada as a project engineer. I'm Dan in the hurt chair, and I'm always on Nautilus. <laughs> Thankfully. Can you come up? Hey, up I'm uh, up a bit more yeah. Chris Krasnowski. I'm a uh, navigation navigator and a high-resolution mapping specialist, and currently looking for a submarine. Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch. And when I'm not on the Nautilus, I am a master's student at Cal State Northridge and a research assistant at UCLA. And I'm Larry Mayer, I'm the watch leader on this watch. And uh, my day job is the director of the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire. Hi, uh, where are we, we're skipping Dan. Um, hi. Oh. <laughs> Dan has a headset. Well, you can you can introduce yourself. Dan, right. Yeah, we're gonna make Dan introduce himself. Hi, I'm, I'm Dan Dietz. Uh, I'm just sitting in uh, on this watch just to you know look at the screens and you know find the submarine. Where but, do you work, Dan? Oh, so <laughs> my day, on my day job, I am a program officer at the Office of Naval Research. So we do new. We look at the science behind why the ocean works and, you know, what are the driving forces and factors and processes that, you know, happen in the ocean to all the way to applications where we develop new sensors and new technologies to explore the ocean. Cool. Uh, I am Alejandra Martinez. I am the Science Communication Fellow Board. So uh, it's my job to read your questions as you uh, type them in online at nautiluslive.org in case you're watching on YouTube. Uh, go over to nautiluslive.org and uh, send us a message or, or write a question. Uh, when I'm not on Nautilus, I am a seventh grade science teacher at Memorial Junior High in Eagle Pass, Texas. And this here that you can actually see 
um, on screen is Slomo the Sloth, and uh, my students follow him on social media. You can come up a bit more for us. Anel, can you zoom in there on my yeah, copy. shiny Husky 916 syringe? Mm. Thank you. Yeah, any further or are you good there? Yeah, that's good. All right. I'll just, there we go. Just wanted to see if my uh, inlay was holding up to the uh, extreme depth. So, so, Dan, I can understand carrying a knife. What, what kind of things can you do with that open end wrench? Uh, can remove shackles, put shackles back on, <laughs> tighten up a hydraulic leak. There you go. As long as everything's 916. As long as everything's 916. <laughs> Actually, that wrench belongs to the kit, a brand new kit that we got. Oh, and now there's a missing, <laughs> a missing no, wrench. No, I purposely took it out of there and. Um, put it somewhere else that way I never have to look for it. <laughs> Smart. There's actually a story to that. Uh, there's an old joke so that when you buy a new wrench kit, you just take the 916 and <laughs> toss it away because uh, then you'll never have to spend any time looking Chris, for it. Chris, I'll just turn to Chris for a second. On the far out of beam. Yeah, which side? Uh, left, I think. Yeah. Uh, seeing the green area? The this? No, 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 go, right. keep going. Far. No, keep going. Shallower, shallower. Oh, somebody's got the mouse. Okay, great. That? No, if I can touch the mouse. Yeah, it. yeah go for it. I'm just looking at this up here. And oh, yeah, well, well we're going to cross it. We'll see what it looks like. Okay. I don't... I, I never trust I, it, things it, it, on it the far out of beam. Yeah, but. it doesn't really have any relief, though, see? Yeah. I think it just kind of worked out that way. Yeah. Oh, it looks like one of my students is writing in. I don't know who you are. You need to write your name. But hi. Um, somebody said that they wanted to say they love everyone's work, and uh, you guys are my Super Bowl. Uh, and we have somebody from the south coast of England tuning in, asking what we are looking for on this dive, and are we expecting to see any wildlife or hoping to see any wildlife? Um, so we are cur currently looking for a scuttled uh, Japanese submarine. And yes, we are hoping to see all of the wildlife. <laughs> Always hoping. Yes. We saw a shrimp so far on our watch. <laughs> I saw a squid on the last watch. Very uh -huh. alley, as you know, to uh, sea life. And so there, you're exactly right. There will undoubtedly be fish and other animals around this wreck, although it's fairly deep. But nevertheless, uh, any underwater object or structure, particularly yes, one with hiding places, is going to be very attractive. Oh, no. Yeah. To fish. Oh, it's Isabella. Hi, Isabella. Let me write it down. So I can. Taylor Ann is a, or anyone, these, uh, Particles that are in a, look like a lot of particles in the water when you see in this close up of some of the gauges on uh, Hercules. Are those just uh, silt, uh, particulate matter, or perhaps mm -hmm. they look almost round, like perhaps they may be coral eggs or something? Or is that what do you think that is? So it's definitely a mixture of a lot of things. So we call it marine snow because it kind of looks like snow, right. um, but it's definitely organic matter. Um, falling from the, the shallower uh, depths to the deeper depths. So this is uh, the food source for a lot of things in the deep sea. So it could potentially be, yeah, gametes or eggs of other species, um, just broken down tissue, um, fecal matter, sediment. It's a mixture, even probably with microplastics could be in, in these bits. These are the kind of things that those corals are evolved precisely to filter and catch and spit out what they can't eat and eat what they can. Exactly, yeah. This is a, an ideal food source for the deep sea. So it's a great food source and very, uh, when you see nutrients, you see things in the water, that means there's more life. But for our cameraman, Jonathan, uh, those particles may create kind of a, a backscatter Same problem place. for him with the bright lights in order to illuminate the subs oh, the to day? get good Same images. Sense. Exactly, yeah. So we'll be you know, playing around with the lighting to make sure we can get a little bit of that filtered out so we get the best imagery uh -huh. as possible. 
Right. Well, uh, somebody about a, a minute and a half ago said they spotted a shrimp. Yeah, that was, this is the one we were already headed to. <laughs> More wildlife. At this one? Well, there's definitely a lot of little food entered. particles in the water column for them to uh, eat. Oh, and geez. we are still in search mode. Uh, but now you can't. Uh, Almost certainly very near the first of these three I Japanese this submarines. The, this, what was the contour that we were supposed to? That was a, a depth. What's it? Can you press the blue button when you get a chance, Chris? Thank you. Yeah, I, I sped up just a little just to get out in front of you there. Oh, I need to go faster. Sorry. I'll bump it up to 100%. I might have ran out of... Yeah, I'm going to put in 100 meters there. They would have likely read their depth. the button again there didn't sometimes it doesn't take All right, there it is thank you yeah our first uh, target today is a uh, Japanese submarine that was designated as I-201 and as Larry was just telling us this is a Japanese fast attack boat that was commissioned in February of 1945 and was not, uh, did not go in and see active service. The Navy captured it intact, uh, took it, to, was going to have it, uh, trying to drive it to Pearl Harbor, but they had a, a battery fire. What's that? They towed it to Pearl Harbor, took it apart, uh, learned what all we could from it, and then took it off of uh, the island to an undisclosed location. And uh, sunk the submarine. So, but we're, we're going after three submarines today, uh, on this today and tomorrow rather. Uh, and the, the first intended target is I-201. As Larry said, this thing could reach uh, 19 knots underwater, which is extraordinary for that time, faster than any American sub at the time. Uh, we're, we're fortunate the war ended when it did, and they Should didn't catch up to you there, I'm on. Right on you, yeah. Watching online, we're at the right depth, we're in the right area, but we have not seen the sub yet because its precise location has been kept classified and is continuing to be kept classified, but we're close. Only we would have had an orbit while we were looking for Amelia. Or did we? Uh, maybe I'm thinking of the uh, Samoan Clipper. Larry, have you or anybody else on the team uh, been involved? Samoan Clipper, we just had only, only Adelante, or only Argus doing the tow sled mode. It's just
What's the difference between uh, what is the difference between side scan and and Norbit? It's a dangerous question, Dan. How much detail do you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're both sonars, right? Oh yeah. So uh, side scan is more of a it's called an imaging sonar. Right. Yeah. Um, and a side scan only has uh, a true side scan or a traditional side scan only gives backscatter, backscatter and range. That's all you get. Really? It does not give angle. Uh. So in general, uh, whereas a multi-beam is general, it does give you backscatter, but really it's trying to pinpoint positions. Right. So it gives you a range and an angle, and the backscatter is kind of incidental. Uh, that being said, as the technology improves on both sides, uh, side scans are able to give you uh, are now able to give you range and angle, uh, but they're better at backscatter. Multi beams are able to give you pretty good backscatter, but they're better at bathymetry. To, to get All to right. get the depth out of a side scan, you, you typically need to have multiple rows of side scans. That's right. Yeah. You can't just do it with a single a yeah. single. Yeah, the array rate. geometry is different and stuff too, but I mean, yeah, but side scans are getting pretty good at bathymetry, and multi beams are getting pretty good at backscatter now. Uh, side scans will give you a lot wider swath generally, yeah. uh, but you do also don't get points directly below you because of the way that they work. They look at phase difference between the so to get they they're point they're pointed out to the sides as the name suggests, right? Right. So it's basically just taking your fish finder and turning it sideways and then mapping the returns over time. That's like the traditional side scans. That's all they're doing. Right. Uh, and they have a very long array, so they send a very narrow, a very narrow but wide, like narrow along track and wide across track beam. So you get this thing, and you just get the backscatter. And it looks like they're 3D because it, like the sonar casts shadows and that sort of thing. So it looks like they're right. shaded, right? Because it's creating an image. So it's really it's like the difference between looking at a, a radar sweep or a lidar sweep and looking at a photograph. And they yeah, give you, they quite, give you kind of different, different what, what, One of the real differences is that typically the side scan sonars have been towed closer to the bottom. Yeah. And you get that very, very uh, low angle yeah. of striking a target, which casts a big shadow. So they're very, very sensitive to looking for small objects on the seafloor um, to cast a big shadow, just much less quantitative about the height of that object. Um, and even sometimes question about the, the position. Of it, but it, yeah, that's know, right. A real good first first pass for trying to find yeah. things. Yeah. So like, if you're on a slope because you don't get the bathymetry, if an object is upslope of you, it's going to appear closer than it truly is. Oh, I see. Because yeah. it, yeah, because the side scan sort of the plotters generally assume a flat seafloor. Right. Um, and again, like with the modern ones, that's somewhat solved, but. So what's the the that's part of the fundamental difference between you mentioned an imaging sonar and versus a multi beam. No, that, sonar. that that was something different. I was talking about that's things like uh, Oct Octopus and Blue View and things like that. Right. And yeah, there again, they're a, they're a multi beam sonar, but they use a different geometry. They have uh, almost a square array, mm -hmm. and instead of uh, forming a very thin fan of beams, they form a wedge. Um, yeah. And with so many, you get many, a full image. Right, see, with yeah. many, many uh, different uh, receptions of what comes back. And so you get this very high-resolution acoustic picture, but a little less uh, accuracy in terms of uh, the depth right. question. Yeah, and so it's, it's, great, it's great as an inspection sonar. People use it to inspect right. pipelines and... and and for a thing like a wreck, it's, it's actually quite good because you, you, you're... Oh, wait, look at this. There we go. There we go. Norbit coming. There we go. Okay, and that's... Uh, all right, you know, it's getting very strong on the port side. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, starboard side, sorry. Excuse me, starboard. Yeah. Uh, which way? I, I was... Okay, there we are. I was about to point something out in the water column view, and I saw that there was a very bright spot. Yeah. That, okay. uh, Norbit again, coming to the rescue. 
Um, okay. Maybe. We're not, we're not could surveilled. be a submarine. Could yeah. be a pile of rocks. Yeah. It can't. It could be. <laughs> so far, I don't see anything that's super identifiable as a submarine, but it is it one is of a the target. biggest targets yeah. that we've seen. Yeah. Yeah. An object on otherwise. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's also it's right kind of smack in the middle of several yeah. reported target sites we've uh, seen. So. Uh, There's still that? more. That was, that was for Terry and Chris if they're tuned in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I like is the, the fairly linear nature so far. Let's see what happens with the sector scanners as we uh, approach. Maybe, maybe uh, you want to go back to 100 meter range on uh, Adelaide? Roger, Roger that. I think we'd get, a, we'd get a clearer picture. Absolutely. I'm really excited showing more because I think from looking at all the rocks, I really was yeah, convinced I mean, it was a rock for a second. This thing is definitely looking long and skinny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we really good. see something just continue like that. Okay. How far is that from, uh, what's the slant range there, approximately? Uh, that would be like a really weird rock. It looks like slant range, or slant range is 50 meters. Oh, and yeah. it's, uh, oh, I should off, de I should it's definitely. off in... X to 40. No, don't don't move anywhere yeah, yeah, yet. Don't, no, no, I'm not moving anywhere. I, yeah. I should definitely pick it up in uh, in Atlantis. So nice. You think we go no? Because like you, your beam is not that. Oh, your beam is not that wide. This is oh, this, this yeah. is no, I'd have to, over top Sorry, of it. I'd have to be way lower. Yeah. I'm up 50 meters. But this target. Yeah, this has got to be it. This yeah. target's about 50 meters away. Um, he said about 50 meters from the range of Hercules to the target. Very good. So that's well, that's 50 slant meters range. slant range, right. and it's 35 meters across oh. track. Yeah. So it's yeah. Yeah. 35 uh. across and 35 down. So that equals 75. No, that equals 50. I failed horribly at math. So, so what what we're referencing is uh, what we're seeing on the, on the Norbit mapping system, right. um, yeah. and we're uh, not displaying that because uh, we're not allowed to to divulge the location. But it's a very, very yeah. as, as, it, as it continues, it's a very convincing target. It yeah, so uh, be patient, viewers, and, and it should come into view uh, on your screen soon. In the meantime, enjoy the jelly in front yes, of you. Yes, right that. <laughs> that's a cute jelly. <laughs> Yeah, for sure, that's got to be it, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I think. Uh, I yeah. think uh, if so, wait, I'm going to look at the high In as much as we're looking for shrimp a submarine, or no fish. looks like a submarine. Oh, <laughs> okay, so actually, yeah, this might be the stern. That might be the, the stern, stern of it. Yeah, yeah it, it certainly looks like the stern section. How long is it, how long is it supposed to be? I think you're right. The uh, entire so the entire submarine was 79 meters long. All right, so yeah, and, that and means that would that would put the bow pretty close to where we said the bow point should be. Right. How many feet is that? How many feet? 259 feet. 259 feet long. That's equivalent to... A football field. A little less than yeah. a football field. But uh, it is in two two pieces, so... Jonathan is here to sing for us. Yeah, there you go. See, you can... Well, we... Uh, yeah, the folks outside can't see, but... Uh, Chris has a sector scan... Sector light scan. That was funny how there's space. a hole there. Well, there may very I well be. I wonder if I should put multi detect on. I might actually uh, should. I'm, I, well, I'm curious to be honest because uh, yeah, for I some of the other, I won't mention names. Some of the other sonars, the multi detect. Uh, oh no! Yeah, no multi detect is working for us. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Excellent. All right. You guys are so talking sonar geek language. I have no idea what you just said. Well, multi detect allows it to detect more than one hit on a on a ping. So if you if you have multiple things sticking up and going around, you actually can define it. I mean, yeah, the multi I've had good luck with multi-detect in Norbit. Yeah, okay, well, that, that, that's good because uh, other uh, others have not <laughs> in other systems, yeah. uh, put it that way. Jonathan, we, just we, letting you know your grand entrance went live on uh, the internet <laughs> on Channel 3. Yeah, that's... Um, uh, Oh, she, I she love it. That, uh, no, it. Don't pick it, your nose or anything. This is a, it's a, a grand, it, this truly is, is deserving of a grand entrance. Um, really yeah. demonstrating the power of good, good navigational sleuthing. Yeah, I like that. And uh, the power of Norbit. But I, I, I didn't say that. Well, actually, no, it's, it's a very important point to make because had we just come on this <laughs> path, without having I the ability of the Norbert to see that far, 
uh, likely we would have missed it on this yeah. passage. Yeah. That looks like that might even have been the conning tower. Well, let's let's. Yeah, that would have. It's kind of upside down, right? On its side and laying over. That would have been just outside of uh, Hercules' range, or maybe. I don't know. Depends on how high we were. Oh, there's another target. Yeah. So how far away, how far apart were the two pieces? I thought they were quite far apart. I don't, I think that was probably just the sonar looking through. That's why I turned, because I turned on multi-detect right here, and you see that we were getting more returns in general on it. Where that, so the hole in the middle is I probably... I think that might have just been a, a sonar thing. Huh. It does look like there's... Uh, Maybe it was that uh, sonar absorbing paint. Yeah. <laughs> They got, they got the right frequency there. That's right. <laughs> At that spot. Should we turn around and fly the other side? Yeah, that just is. Yeah, right. yeah that, that, would, that would be great, yeah. All right. Well, why don't we, do you want to continue along to see if there's any other debris or anything, or do we want to? Well, if we, if we with the position of the bow is reported uh, so you want to just a little bit ahead here, so maybe let's, let's at least pass through the position of the bow and then come back around. Uh, if that's still a no pictures, you can still you can. Eighty some meters away, yeah. 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 Well. Okay. okay. I'm, yeah, we can do it. Yeah. I'm just yeah, just letting you know. No, they're going to the fish folder, but I, I scrub out all of the lat longs. So wait, how long is this supposed to be in meters? Uh, the entire submarine was 79 meters. You make a measurement of that section and see. Uh, see, because only yeah, here I'm getting 60 meters. Yeah. Well, all right. So there's. I mean, we're on. Track, but that's, yeah, missing the bow then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah we got to find oh, the bow. The, oh, so the bow is not attached. No, no, no. no. Not the oh, bow. I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, okay. And that, and that's what I'm saying. If we if we move ahead about another yeah, 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 yeah. 80 meters, uh, yeah. the bow maybe we may find the find the bow there. Yeah, the torpedo. Uh, 80 meters or eight minutes, if you. Yeah, I, I, I think I think having invested all this time looking, we can invest another eight minutes. 100 percent. And I think yeah. we're, uh, that that's the backscatter we're seeing uh, in terms of the behind the submarine right. in terms of uh, how it's it's affected the the sediment distribution. All right, somebody's uh, driving the Norbit screen. Careful with the mouse. It's Jonathan. Yeah, that why, makes sense. Why is Norbit up on my screen? <laughs> because we are looking at it back here. What? But, but <laughs> if, if you if you want to take it, you, you you take the screen over if you want. I love the definitive we. <laughs> At no time will the model not it, be rotating. Is it Ross Pross that? Uh, no, it's uh, it's the Norb screen. Norb screen. Oh, okay. Oh, it's like the fidget spinner. Norb. There's there's Jonathan <laughs> rotating now, just to not be out rotated. Uh, so for those of you viewing at home, we are uh, doing a scan, and then we'll be uh, dropping down on this uh, submarine site in a little bit. <laughs> Come up here. Oh, is that the first pass of the uh, heart-shaped mound that we scanned the other day? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just figuring out. Yeah, this is the first pass, and uh, I've been just trying to make sure it's fully geo-referenced, because earlier... Are, what are all the orange lines representing the camera angles? Or? Yeah, the orange lines represent the estimated, the input position of the ROV versus the calculated uh, location of the camera. So there's a little ROV at the end of every one of those? Uh, yeah, there's the uh, location of the USBL, I guess. Chris, could you give us a depth reading? Uh, yes, sir. Right at that submarine, I, I think. I think that's right at the submarine. Yeah. Uh, one six six, or sorry, seven six six. Seven six six. Yeah. That's so the that sea floor right. around the sub. Yeah. yeah. So that seven seventy eight was a red herring there. Unless they were talking about like. Yeah. No. Sorry. No, yeah. no. No. It's 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 too far off. Really? Yeah. What am I doing? Oh, I need to I need to press some buttons here. Sorry. It's distracted by all the. Cool models. Okay, so we have on the order of five, six minutes, maybe more, to be at the position of the. Yeah. Do we want to do an uh, Norbit pass over the sub, or do we want to get down in photogrammetry? Well, no, I, th I think what what I'd like to see, to be honest, is uh, let's see if we see the bow where it's supposed to be. If yeah, not, sure. And then we'll come back and we continue a pass over the bow like this, and then come back, pick up the other side. 
yeah. yeah. with Norbert, and then and then give it to Jonathan for the rest yeah. of the day. We got to yeah. we got to come back anyways, yeah, right? Exactly. So I would almost assume come back and once we have a location, I'd like to come down a little lower. Mm -hmm. Sure. And get a better and get a better view on it. Yep. Because yeah, we're kind of in search mode, not map mode. Right. Yeah, like a 20 meter pass. Just a spectacular image, very, very clear. And there is a, a piece off, uh, yeah, chunk there, chunk there off to the side that uh, torpedo, that torpedo uh, looks like it definitely cut it in half. So for those in the room who have been on submarine dives before, what kind of wildlife do you see around them? Lots of sponges, sea anemones. Yeah, I Depends second that. Depth. Yeah, that's Let's exciting. The oh, there's the anechoic tiles there, Chris. That's right, yeah, we found the individual ones. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna switch this to in the Gulf of Mexico around the structures we see giant grouper some is almost as big as the ROV oh wow like a, wow like a cow yeah, size they and they get quite they get quite uh, territorial mm -hmm. on one, of my, on one of my flights over to Hawaii I saw a movie about an Australian girl who befri befriended a grouper it was really quite a remarkable movie yeah yeah oh. There was, uh, was it like my grouper teacher. <laughs> <laughs> there was one. Uh, the the only one that got that joke. One that was legendary on one of the jackets there in the Gulf of Mexico. He even had a name, Joey. And, um, <laughs> he did not like ROVs in his domain. He would come out, and puff up, and put up <laughs> his fins, and he would actually push the ROV. Oh my gosh! And bump it. Wow. Yeah, he, he, he's used to eating whatever came into his territory. Pretty much, yeah. Or, or scaring it away because he's bigger than anybody else. Chris, you, you labeled the sub aft section, right? The, I did, yeah. We, we had a position for that, too. Um, did you plot that one up or did you just plot the bow? I think I just plotted the bow. Okay, it would be, it would be interesting to find out where that plotted position uh, wait, comes. Wait, it looks like... Wait for it. Ooh. Wait for it. Eh, maybe just wrong. No. Uh, he's getting anxious there. Yeah. I say, I say another two minutes. Chris, yeah. I'm not sure we need a, a sound effect panel. We have Jonathan. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, Chris, are you okay to answer a question? Because we have one from a viewer for you. One second. Oh. Processing. Okay, go. Uh, what are your thoughts on synthetic aperture sonar? <laughs> um. I don't know. I haven't used it a whole lot, really. Uh, I believe synthetic aperture sonar is more of a side scanning kind of thing, is it not, Larry? Yeah, synthetic aperture sonar is uh, side scan, but they also have interfer interferometric. Right. Yeah. So you get, so you can yeah. get bathymetry. So the it's the difference with a synthetic aperture sonar oh. is that the the resolution of a sonar is very much dependent on the size of the sonar, the length of the array, as we oh. call it. And, uh, oh. yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're seeing, maybe oh. we're seeing something here, yeah. Um, yep, and that's right, right oh. near where it's supposed oh, and to be. we're right on top of it, yeah. so that'll yeah. get good pings on yeah. it. Yeah. And so with a synthetic aperture sonar, they take a sonar that's maybe a meter, meter and a half long, but using very fancy uh, signal processing, create a virtual sonar that's much, much, much longer. And that allows it to maintain um, very, very high resolution, even at far ranges. So you can see centimeter size objects at far range. Uh, so that's its big advantage. It has a high price you pay in terms of signal processing um, and your your ability to position. Wasn't that technology uh, significantly enhanced when they were looking for the um Missing airplane? Yeah. What was it? The, the MH370? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they may very well have brought synthetic aperture sonars in because uh, Hugen, uh, same company, Konsberg, the Hugen uh, 
um, autonomous uh, vehicles uh, that they have. The same company makes uh, something called HiSAS, which is uh, probably one of the most sophisticated synthetic aperture sonars, too. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you tuning in, uh, we have somebody asking if we found the sub. It looks like we found something very interesting and sub oh, looking yeah, like. I, I, I would say without question. We <laughs> oh, there would be some so really weird yeah, rocks. Gonna, <laughs> gonna, no, no. Really good points on yeah. the bow section. You can yeah. even see the shape of the. Yeah, we, yeah we've now found. Yeah, you can totally see the shape. Now found the bow, yeah. yeah. Now, now. Look at the knife edge there. Yeah. Interestingly, we may want to come back the other side for the. Yeah, come back the other side yeah. of the bow and then swap sides for the stern section. I think what I'm going to do is try to grid this up real quick and get mm -hmm. it in the high pack for some line planning. Yep. Okay. Uh, but but I think you want to catch the occluded side on, oh, for sure. uh, yeah, on yeah. both. Yeah, and just so everyone knows, unfortunately we're not able to show the maps, uh, the Norbit maps this time, just for... Uh, Discretion, discretionary purposes. Yeah, we're we're not allowed to, to share the location, so that is why you're not seeing the maps. But know that things are happening. Oh, Rye, we have a cousin of yours from Ireland watching. Hi, it's Rye. <laughs> oh, my grandma's been in. telling. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandma's been talking, Rye. <laughs> oh, oh, that was right. I thought it was my Forgive cousin me, from Ireland. I don't Ireland. actually know no, a cousin right. in Ireland, so <laughs> TJ from Ireland, Mike from Hawaii. <laughs> Are you related to TJ? <laughs> I'm going to ask after this show. <laughs> it's a great way to find out. <laughs> S somebody asked, how did the Nautilus come up with such a good-looking crew? <laughs> Thank you, Manel, for the, the video footage of the of the van. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the most screen time that you guys have had in the van. Normally we're doing Norbit or Triclops. Yeah, we should have done it on Halloween. We did for a little bit. Yeah. We did. We got but we were we had a very busy Halloween actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we were doing the the hydrothermal vents. Huh? Uh, so yeah, on uh, on channel one, it is blue. We we are currently mapping, so we're kind of uh, high up in the water column. Well, not super high, but um, we'll be descending on the on the uh, submarine in in a little bit. So just uh, be patient. Once we finish mapping, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna get Jonathan down there so he can film. We're Dan's going to bring the cameras down there, and I'm going to say, Dan, let's film, and Dan's going to film. Oh, Dan's going to do it. We know we know who's actually in charge in, in uh, cinematography projects like that, and that <laughs> is the ROV pilots up front row. <laughs> it makes up for the fact that they're sometimes touching the lenses with greasy fingers. <laughs> Just like an Uber driver, <laughs> tell me where you want to go, not how to get there. <laughs> Are you still moving? Fly the ROV, not the camera. <laughs> and yeah, go ahead, Rachel. Uh, are you are you happy? Can we turn around? Yeah, I was going to say we don't need to go too far past. I think he just wants to get a rendered version for the high pack map, but but let's not go too far past it. Roger. Stand by, Larry. We gotta talk under the bridge here. We might okay. do some heading changes. All right. You can uh, hold position here. I think, Chris. Yep. We happy to hold here, Larry? Yep. All right. We should set up for the. We should set up the for the... The bridge needs to do a heading change, okay. uh, so we're going to have to wait for that. Roger that. Setting right. up for the, uh, for the... So you want to be on the uh, west side to go back? Is that correct? On the opposite side, we passed yeah. this one, and then right. we're going to swap for the stern section. Roger. Make a little crisscross. Heading west. Give you a sweep over it from this angle of the dangle. 
Sure. And Chris, how far down do you want to come? Uh, we could, I mean, we know exactly where it is, so we could yeah. come down uh, maybe 10 meters. You got that, Dan? Yeah, right at that. Yeah, figure a 20 meter altitude pass will keep us a safe distance above it. What's happening? Some weird points. Maybe multi detect action. Multi detect action. Yeah. The problem is when you get the interference like this, sometimes that tricks out the multi detect. What is it doing? It's just listing twice or there's more yeah, sensors it, it in there? To get, it allows it to get two ranges per beam. Uh, in so the iron bottom? No, 600. 600. Someone wrote in, hashtag Dan Conway legend. Huh? Hashtag Dan Conway legend. I guess they're trying to make it a thing. Who's Dan Conway? <laughs> Do you want me to come down? Uh, no, I'm just coming uh, west right now. And okay. then we'll, we'll turn and uh, then we'll come down once okay. we get uh, far enough west. Hopefully uh, we won't have to move the boat. We just go back the other way. I don't think you have too much tether left, probably, but... No. Uh, you can come down, actually. Okay. Sorry, yeah, 10 meters. Come down 10. Sorry, I was not paying attention to my navigation there. It's okay. <laughs> absorbed in the That's why I'm here. The map. Yes it is. Co pilot has saved my bacon so many times I've lost count. Same with the navigator. Okay. Uh is that far enough west, Chris? Yeah, that actually looks perfect. Okay, I'm gonna turn to the south and uh mm. we'll both come Sorry down. Are you dragging right? me? Yeah, if you come down another uh Five. You want me to oh, yeah, well, I can't five. move the ship at the moment, but no, we done. we should be able to come down to par there. There's undoubtedly people listening. We're stretched out. Watching that are wondering where they're not seeing the sub on the images. We are uh, have to keep the location uh, classified uh, so we cannot yeah, release can the sonar image, but the visual images will double come click, soon. Double tap your. Auto head yeah, we're basically just setting up the sonar survey so we have a, a very clear Coming picture of, of where uh, the no, two just pieces of the bow section there, so and the we'll tail tail. of okay. the submarine are. We, we've now imaged them with the first pass of the sonar. We're going to come back, get a second pass so yeah, that we I'll cover both sides to you, like. of it. So we have a complete picture of the, so of the submarine. And then once we're done with that, we'll lower and get, uh, get the okay, we can lower keep coming in down camera there. range and everybody will be able to see visually what we've been seeing with the sonar. So stand by, folks. You'll be able to see it soon. They can tell you that you know, the sonar does work it beautifully. Clear images and location. And, and Larry, once we found this first one, that gives us some certainty about the location That's of the other subs, too, doesn't it? No. What's that? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not at yeah, all. No, Not at keep all. coming down. <laughs> we'll come, I, think, uh, I think each one is unique. Down to about is individually meters. as uncertain. Yeah. I was hoping once we found one, you know, like, that's it. We know where the other is. But uh, we're, we know approximately where they are. So. Yeah, yes. I, I think we, we, we right, You come uh, to 25, I'll come to 20. Start with a, a much level, higher level of confidence right now. Yeah, well, at least we know our search method works. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we do have a lot of uh, marine snow, which will challenge Jonathan with his cameras and and uh, lights. But I'm, we are have, have faith in you, Jonathan. We're confident you can overcome it and produce some spectacular film uh, see, that, and that, images. That, that's nice. the only thing. Are you actually coming down right now? No, my altitude's not changing. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna stop for a yeah. minute, so. I'm a pinhead. I had the wrong button pushed. <laughs> That's cool.
We don't want to get too far away, do we? I'm at 26 meters yeah, right now, so. We have a couple things going on up here. We are uh, doing a ship that. rotation okay. and ROVs oh. trying to get themselves situated to come down. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, that's, uh, I'll come down a few more meters. Uh, Why do we have a tether wrap right now? Uh, we probably, we had half and then yeah. when you came around. Uh, we both turned half a turn the wrong way. That wasn't, sorry, was not paying attention. Okay, I'm holding about 20 meters. 20? Ship yeah. seems to be headed south already, so. No, that's the, uh, that's the ship, that's the rotation. It's quite the rotation. Yeah, but our uh, Atalanta didn't move. Yeah, the wind picked up, so they had to switch. Oriel was just waiting for a... Yeah, afternoon trade winds. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, we could, uh, this will be good. This will get us a, some view of the top. We're a little far from it, but I think that's okay. Well, uh, we can I can come back to the east a little if you want. Yeah, why don't you do that? And it. Maybe, yeah, just a little. And maybe you come down a little if you do that. Uh, What's your... Uh, 20 meters. Yeah, maybe do 15. Or even 10. I mean, we'll see what 15 looks like. Yeah, I think we discussed a 20 meter pass for hazards. For, yeah, oh, for, for, for sa hazards? For, okay, for, Roger, for then safety no. reasons, yeah. Yeah, we, then we, yeah. in that case. All right, yeah. in that case, your position is good because the way the deck is such situated here, this will get us a good view on it. Yeah, I would be happy to come down lower, but that was right. what we nope, discussed. Let's, let's do it. That was agreed upon. Yeah. I can guarantee you there's less hazards here than most ROV operations. The difference is uh, there's usually another ROV on the boat to get yeah, us probably out. Probably less, yeah, less, yeah, less, less, this is a good position, Dan. You don't need to go lateral anymore. I'm right swing my less to get hung up on, too. And the interesting thing about this submarine, because it was designed for... Uh, yeah, if you want to come around uh, uh, to take that half, that turn out. Six, six, yeah, six, five, okay. uh, when you're ready, I'll just put a ship move in. We're just getting both sides. They're coming back, come down. Think, right? Yeah, that's the right direction. So, so because the submarine was designed for high submerged seas uh, speed, it had almost no deck guns on it at all. Uh, just just a are. couple of very small Ooh. deck guns. I'm going to come up a little bit. Uh, Roger. Okay. There we start yeah, seeing I moved towards you, sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, Chris, we're ready. All right. I'm just going to put in a 100 meter move and we'll stop when we're done. One zero zero, Roger. Uh, and uh, one, and uh, your uh, heading is one seven uh, one seven southish, zero. Yeah. Bridge, bridge, nav, hundred meters, one seven zero. So, Jonathan, are you going to want to concentrate on the stern section? Yeah, I think that's. The, I think that's. Let's probably, start. Let's yeah. start with the. Let's get rid of the, or get done with the best part first. Yep, exactly. Uh, if you pick a point halfway between when I do the zig or the zag. We might be able to pick it up as we fly over it again. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, what do you, wait, what do you mean? So we're going to go like halfway between and or some. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. Then he wants to yeah. go to the, uh, to yeah, the that, east that's, side. That's my plan. Oh, yeah, because we want to get the other side you of wanna that. Get the, we want to get the other side of it. Yeah, so yeah. if we do it in the middle, maybe you can get a, you know, 90 degree out. We got a little patch testing to do when we get down. There's a little bit of a roll offset. All right. But we can, Rennie and I can 
to solve that. This is actually a good patch test target. Yeah. <laughs> kind of perfect. Yeah, it should be straight. <laughs> should it be a one meter cement block out here somewhere? One by one by one, I would think. Okay, you guys lined up now? Yep, we're s the ship's moving now. Please, yeah. yeah. Just waiting for uh, Atlanta to start moving before I hit the button here. I got people pounding me behind me here. Yeah. <laughs> ships up to speed. Okay, here we go. And what what altitude you at now? We are at two zero meters. So we should get a little bit better view of it, yeah. but it's still going to be. Okay, but still, still not a visual. Uh, yeah. Oh, for sure. But we're trying to stay away for right. in case there's entanglement right. hazard. Right. Exactly. Doctor uh, Doctor Ballard's uh, talked about the danger of entanglement. To give folks an idea. This is not going to be a problem here, but fishing nets on the Lu on the Lusitania are notorious uh, entrapment. Or so I was making the Lusitania one of the most dangerous wrecks in the uh, world. To just so you know, the DVL off. offset is. I know. I'm. I'm not resetting it because of your. Uh, Rather. Because your autos. When we were out here, and uh, I think it was 2001, 2002, we were uh, doing the recovery of the Amy Maru. Uh, and uh, it was the uh, Japanese fishing vessel that was struck by the USS Greenville and went down 12 miles off of Diamond Head. Right. And uh, it was a training fishing vessel, so there was lots of fishing nets on it. And during the six weeks that we were working on it to uh, recover it, uh, we had three ROVs, and each of the ROVs had been tragically entangled in fishing nets at least once by the end. My personal record was uh, fishing net through three thrusters and sucked it in through my horizontal, up through the vertical, out the vertical, and back into the other horizontal. Oh, wow. That's terrifying. It was terrifying. Yeah, it would, once we got it up off the seabed with the rock water, too, we put, and these giant slings that we put under it and a bunch of flotation that we attached. What's that? Uh, it would heave, so the fishing nets would come up and attack you. Oh, my gosh. Another reason to use uh, sub robotic submarines instead of people. Something that Dr. Ballard uh, pioneered. Oh, we have a really good question online. How is this exploration of a sunken submarine different from the Battle of Midway sunken ships? Oh, lost my dog. Does anybody want to? So, uh, in some ways, it, it's not. It's, a, it's the also the exploration of a, a very important historical feature. The, the Midway was lost in battle. These vessels weren't lost in battle. These vessels were sunk at, as, as targets. Midway is very, very, very deep. And these are relatively shallow, so the exploration of the Midway is much, much more difficult to do. Um, and so there, you know, the, the, some things that are the same and some things that are quite different. The, the ultimate technology of the sonars and the cameras, although we're using much more sophisticated cameras now, that's the whole purpose of this trip, is to really test out these new these new cameras. But ultimately, the process of finding it by sonar and the, sneak the, up on more you. closely is the same. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. What's the uh oh about? Kind of jaggedy. 
Yeah, well, I got multi detect on, so I'm wondering if some of that is. <laughs> well, that, that's the that's the issues oh. we typically we've had with multi detect is, uh, is yeah, kind of little tails that. You're gonna yeah. start dragging me. I wonder if I shouldn't have turned it off, bit, but, but I can filter them in post. <laughs> I'll slow down. I might turn it off for the next pass because we're gonna get a. I know people are waiting to see the images visually, but stand by. Folks, we're, uh, we've got to determine with certainty where the submarine is, and that's being done very carefully and slowly and by our masterful ROV subdrivers. Sub and once we know where it is using the sonar, we'll be able to get in a little closer. Oh, I was just yeah, you see those tails yeah, demonstrating to, for John that uh, the ROV people are up here with fidget spinners. Oh, yeah. It's Alexa driving the ROV at the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Well, y'all, you truly do a masterful job. It's uh, so impressive to watch you fly around uh, one of these rock structures, as we will soon see around this submarine, and do so with a smoothness that allows Jonathan, our masterful photographer, to get superb images. The marine snow is going to make jo and Jonathan's job challenging with the lights, but uh, we are confident. Sure, Chris, I'm not, I'm not sure you're gaining with the multi detect. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I can. I don't want to change it now because it's going to. Okay. It's going to mess up the lock. Oh, all right. Uh, we can filter it in post. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. They classify as such. Driving an ROV is a bit like uh, driving a car. You remember when you first started driving, you had your hands at 10 and 2, and you huh. used your blinker all the time. And, um, yeah. You didn't oh, yeah. listen to the radio and didn't have any Focus. conversations. Focus, that's it. Nowadays, you're driving down the road with a Big Mac in one hand and uh, French uh, fries. Uh, and the, uh, don't try this at home, no, kids. No, never. <laughs> that's right. And, and Dan, I always like it. And texting with the other hand. So. <laughs> You guys, uh, I asked you earlier today, do you, uh, do you call this uh, driving the sub? And you said you call it, fl you're actually flying the sub. Yeah, great. I always kind of thought about this position as an operator because that's kind of how I started out. Um, when I started out uh, building and testing and uh, repairing and uh, training as well. All right. And... Um, that was always the challenging part was the maintenance and repair uh operation maintenance and repair but the the maintenance and repair were uh, no more multi-detect right here. they were challenging because we're using uh very expensive components for one right and a lot of you know uh, it's like opening up the hood of your car and being able to you know rip the guts out of it or you know pull the engine out while it's on the side of the road and do some repairs of the engine and then put the engine back in and get back in the car and drive it 100 miles an hour down the freeway across it, the country it's it's amazing and really impressive to see you guys work i've watched you uh repair uh, you know minor problems that could turn into major problems on the rov on the cameras on 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 all sorts of equipment you just you guys just step right up no matter what the problem is, and fix it, yeah. and uh, you make it make the complicated look easy. Whenever I go to the races, I always buy a pit pass, and I'm always impressed that you know the race car drivers out there are getting all the glory on the racetrack. Right. But uh, for that one driver, there's uh, you know at least half a dozen people in the pits supporting him, and uh, he has. He or she, they have all their sponsors and uh, all the people behind the scenes that enable them to get in that car and, and yeah. you know, drive it to the extreme limits. And it's very similar with our ROV operation. We we get the the reward is you know sitting here operating it, but uh, all right. without uh, a huge team of people, I think we're we've, wouldn't we've be got we've got all this. So why don't we start coming over to the. Ready? Coming over to your port. Okay, yeah. I'm going to stop and turn, or do you want me to just lateral? Uh, you can turn if you want. Yeah, I think it'd be faster if we turn. 60 meters to port. Right. 6-0 okay. port.
Chris, is that a, you've stitched the two images together, so that's a pretty accurate representation of where the two sections of the ship are? Yeah, that's correct. I should be able to, I can do this quickly, Chris. You don't care yeah. about a slow yeah, turn this, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing in between that we're interested in. I'm gonna have, well, I mean, we'll actually, we'll get some more well, pings on it as you pass, so. Sometimes cool. Chris likes that slow sweeping turn, yeah, so Yeah, but checking. no, I don't need it this time. We're trying to get this done so we can get down. Yeah, so so uh, John, it, it, Jonathan's photogrammetry is the one that really may be, be able to take the two pieces and put them back together. Oh, yeah, exactly. When he has the, th the two 3D models. Oh, that would be. Well, and, and reconstruct what uh, how it sank as uh, Dr. Ballard did so masterfully on the Titanic. Uh, we did not know that the Titanic, we knew it, it, it kind of the way it looked above the surface, but Dr. Ballard's the one that figured out that it had the bow section of the Titanic it separated, hung there for a moment, and then the steel broke. The bow broke away, flew to the bottom, and the stern rose and spun, and then sank slowly. Uh, um, Jonathan, I don't know if it'll this. affect your map, but if you wanted to reset the DVL, you could do so now. It will not affect my map, and I can reset the DVL. All right. So Hercules is essentially midway between the two sections, flying above above them both. Yeah, and the idea is now it's going to come make one more pass, this time at 20 meters above it, uh, for safety, basically, so we make sure that there are no objects there that the Hercules, as it gets closer, might now? get entangled in. But also from uh, a sonar yeah, perspective, you're going to have to move the boat uh, to be the able uh, to let east us look at the side that was blocked bridge, bridge. from the sonar yeah. as right. we passed it initially. Yep, I'll come tail to tail and. Uh, Another 20 meters, it looks like. So like there we came. Another. L let me, let me back up, right, and you can come around the other way to take that half turn out. The sonar would pick up any large objects, larger objects, uh, Larry, that were sticking up and above the sub, but not Do necessarily. Come come yes, 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 please. Yeah, it, yeah. it may even pick up lines. All the way around. Let's let's let the yeah. front row talk. Bridge, right? bridge nav, two zero meters, zero nine zero. Can you get around there? I think so. We'll want to step the boat off anyways. And Here you are. Can you keep come all the way around now? Uh, I am. Oh, you can you can hold that. Let me uh. Let's see. Yeah, you can hold that. I'll wait for the vessel to move. What you looking for, Chris? <laughs> no, I'm just getting that set up for the next yeah, pass. Yeah. And you got multi multi detect suppressed. Yeah, multi detect now. is off. Good. Good. <laughs> no offense. Larry does not does not trust multi detect. <laughs> not impressed with multi detect, on Larry. That's correct. Well, this looks better than than most I've seen, but it's still yeah. it's still when you have a target like this, it leaves you these tails. Yeah, it uh, that are probably most mostly uh, side load. It's just tracking the side load come hit off the strong yeah. target. What, what? Sorry, what is it? What is it you don't like about it? What well, does it do to the image? If you have a very strong target standing proud like this, um, we'll often get what's called a side load. That the, the the sonar beam has its main beam, but it has a number of lower energy beams off to the side. But if it the target has the right angle, those side beams will give you a strong return too. Mm -hmm. And the multi-detect will pick those up too and, and give you this little extension of the target. I call them little tails that come off. Um, and and it's, it's a very difficult thing for a sonar manufacturer to adjust. Um, right. So you, you don't blame the sonar manufacturer. You, know, you sit there and play with thresholds and get rid of them, but it's, right. it's, a, it's a tough battle. So the multi-detect is really good if you have a, a, a mooring or a line or something like that where you'll have multiple targets that just progress up through the water column, and that, then you'll be able to see that. But in this case, with a hard, strong ta target on the bottom, it probably is a little a little deceptive. Well, that's some of the... Uh, Let's uh, bring it to uh, maybe 160. You think I'm far enough to the uh, east? Yeah, you're... Well, pretty. Yeah, you're. Uh, I think you'll be okay. I think we're like right in line with it there, aren't we? 
We got six meters left on the ship move. Okay, so. we'll uh, just let that happen then. Ooh, there you go. Uh, for viewers wondering about our schedule, we are diving today on a uh, scuttled submarine, and then uh, we're, yeah, actually, we'll be yeah, doing the same tomorrow. Position. So if you look, like we'll get a good angle right. as we go that way. Yeah, so one six zero. We're probably gonna need to bring the ship over a little further, yeah. Uh, we got one of Daniela's students writing in. Rowan, bridge, bridge, have another two zero meters from period six. Hi. I'll hold here and let She's you. She's not know. on watch right now, but I will tell her that you messaged. Yeah, because they're getting extra credit for writing in. Yeah, he's asking uh, if we get to eat food there like McDonald's. No, we do not. But the food is really, really good. It's better than McDonald's, I promise. Yeah. And if we've seen any pregnancy horses. I think this is too deep for seahorses. What is the, uh, I've had it explained to me before, but I never quite could grasp it. So the, f the threshold on the uh, Mesotech sonar, what is that? We typically run it at zero. I think we turn it up once in a while just playing with the image. What sure. is oh. the? I don't, that, oh, so that probably shows the minimum intensity of the return that it'll display on there. Are, are we going to be coming around? Yeah, we're coming around. The yep. ship is, we had to do a ship move. Okay. Good. Uh, we had to move more east, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Just just impatience back here. Yep. Well. <laughs> That's fair. Well, that'll put uh, Atlanta in line with it anyways, right? So I can sneak up on it with maximum tether. Right. Okay, and once once we've got that passed, then uh, Jonathan's going to want to concentrate on the stern section first. So right, well that'll yeah we'll be right in right. position we'll, we'll, for that. We'll that'll be, be great. We'll be well lined up for that. And even got an incidental patch test. Love it. <laughs> I think it's over. There. I think yeah. I think it's over. There. Yeah, we did like these two par parallel lines and one crossing line. Like it just kind of worked out. different altitudes this is awesome all right you okay. can st you can start moving i'll leave i'll tell him to add the next ship move to this one so it'll all right you'll get us in line oh wait so you're ready Hold to on. come we south gotta, on this one we gotta i gotta do a quick debugging step with norbit here all right Let's get it lined likes up to lose its time synchronization every once in a while what do we say one six zero stand by uh yeah one six zero right Ready? Bridge, bridge, nav, 100 meters, 160. You're good for me to go? Yeah, do it. Here we go. Well, actually, uh, Chris, can you make a measurement on the bow? Say again? Make a measurement on the bow section? Yes, sir. You were snoring. No. <laughs> yeah. It looks like... <laughs> 25 meters? 20 meters? Okay, 20 and 66. 66 was last? Let me, I'll, I'll double check now that we got a few, now that we got a full scan of it. It's very close because it was 70, 79, no, 79, uh, the, the vessel was 79 meters long. Yeah, I'm getting 60 on the... 60 on the and 20, 80, that's pretty good. Yeah, and I mean, this is me. Yeah randomly selecting points on yeah, a yeah. low-res well, representation. Within, so within a meter of the right length, putting the two yeah. sections together, that's pretty yeah, good. So yeah. I mean, yeah, close enough. Yeah, and it's, you know, mangled in the middle, so who yeah, knows may, what bits may, are missing. May have grown. Yeah. No, we, we have an extra meter. Oh, it? yeah. Well, yeah, mangling works both ways, right? right? Exactly. You can have twisted bits hanging out on one side. Mm -hmm.
and it looks like you're going to have some time to play around on a submarine, Dan. Yeah, not as much time as I'd hoped for, but this has been there's really interesting as well. There's more submarines. Yeah. I really wanted to go to the automobile junkyard, which is also on the uh, SOAST website. Yeah. Model A's and old panel trucks, and just some fantastic images that Pisces has got. It's like walking around in a... I, it was just really surreal for me to see those images of automobiles with yeah, sure. submarine animals on them. Not something you see every day. Someday we'll get a dive on there. Huh, Danny? Shout out to Danny Hinshaw if he's watching. I like your uh, remote ROV control center you got there. How far away from the, this section of the sub are we? Uh, we're only a few meters now, let me see. So should it be coming into view here pretty oh quickly? Oh no, we're not going to see it on the, we're up too high, we're not going to see it. Uh, but we're 25 meters away. 25 meters away. We're going to do uh, one more pass over here, John, to the south. Yeah, we just uh, have a little more patience to get this, this last side. Sure. I just want to be, be sure the people listening online know where we are and when approximately they might see it. I think by 2 p.m. Hawaii time, it should be in prime view. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just finishing up some mapping, and then we'll be, we will be descending uh, on this uh, scuttled Japanese submarine. So as soon as we do this last pass, Johan's going to come up, take over for me for a little bit, and I'm going to start getting some dive maps together for you guys. Roger. Yeah, it'll be a few more minutes also while we uh, position Atalanta safely. Right, so to hopefully I can get you at least a rough one. Get Hercules before in you even, uh, Before you even get there. Atalanta in a safe position to... Uh, Approach uh, from the south to the north. We're just passing over. There's a, a piece of kind of separate debris. Yeah. That will soon pass right over. Jonathan, are we going to display uh, OBS on that machine you're working on now? Uh, yeah, it's all set up. Is that you playing with the model there? Yep. Yeah, right. Jo Jonathan's living in past glories right now. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, this is how I, I am patient, which is impatiently. So, yeah, so it's an interesting piece of in, uh, separate debris that we're pressing over right now. It'll be interesting to see what that, what that is. 
The rest of it looks pretty much intact to the two major pieces. The, the large stern section, which we've measured to be about 60 meters long, and the uh, bow section, about 20 meters long, on our rough measurements. And the vessel was supposed to be total length of 79 meters, so that's not too bad to come up with uh, our two sections adding up to 80 meters. How, uh, how big is that piece of debris, Chris? Can you get a height on it, maybe? I wonder what that is. It has a you know, very clearly yeah, defined know. clearly I defined shape. Well, uh, not, I'm uh, not easily right now. All right. It uh, was, makes the scan worth it, because we easily could have been, you know, lateraling along the, along the vessel oh, there. Here, we can, I can get run, measurement. run into it. Oh, no worries. No, I already got it. 50, uh, 60 centimeters. In terms of height off the bottom? Or? Yeah, height off the bottom. Okay, and its length? Uh, length? Yeah, uh, it's a couple of meters easily, maybe more. Yep. Four meters? Yeah, yeah. Making sure I got it right. Yeah, four meters. 